How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to properly secure your underlayment to your subfloor for a nice, smooth finish for your glue down products. This video is brought to you and sponsored by Tools for Flooring and EJ Welch. Tools for Flooring is America's number one online store for all of your flooring tools and supplies. Click on the card to check them out. So what I'm going to use to secure the underlayment to the floor is actually a staple gun. I am not going to nail it. I'm going to use a staple gun. The reason for that being is if you nail or screw your underlayment to the floor, you're really defeating the purpose of having a slick surface because if you pound your underlayment down with nails, you're going to be leaving big dips in the floor. I'll show you that in a few minutes. If you screw it down, you're also going to be leaving big dips in the floor. Simply using a staple gun with a quarter inch crown leaves such a small hole in it that you're never going to have any issues with it showing, telegraphing through on your slick surface that you're installing down. It's simply a tiny quarter inch hole that will never ever be seen. So the main thing we want to address is how often do we staple, how close do our staples need to be out in the field of the board and on the seams of the board. You typically want to do every four inches in the field. I'm going to leave a mark right here for you to see. So four inches uh, this way and uh, four inches this way as well, okay? So anywhere that you measure out from a particular staple, you want to be four inches this way and four inches that way. Either way that you measure, you want a staple four inches within that. On your, on your seams right here, you want to go every two inches, there, 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 there. Every two inches on your seams, which is twice as much as that right there. And one main important thing, you do not want to put your staples right dead on the edge like that, okay? What happens if you do that is it'll, it'll smash the edge down or else it'll just blow the edge of the plywood out, okay? So keep your staples. You can see what I got here, maybe a half inch away from the actual edge itself. Here's the staple. It's going to be about a half inch from the edge of the plywood itself, about every two inches, okay? I'm going to do a few staples right there and let you see exactly what I'm talking about. So typically this is what you're going to want on your seams right here. Notice I, notice I left my staples, again, about a half inch, about a half inch from the edge of the board right there, and about every two inches right there on the seam. So a half inch in from your board and about every two inches on your joints, okay? Now there is something I want to point out about the size of your staples. I didn't address that a while ago. These are actually an inch and a quarter. I just finished a job where it had two layers of subfloor, so that's fine. Typically. Um, you want to use about a 7 8 staple, 3 quarters maybe, depending on uh, how thin of a product you're putting down here. What you, what you want to do is, when you shoot your staples, you do not want them to protrude the bottom of your subfloor like that, okay? If a staple goes all the way through your subfloor, that's a staple or an L. If it protrudes out the bottom of your floor, it completely loses strength. So you want your staple to actually end, you want it to end inside of your board. You do not want it to protrude out. That's when it's going to have the most strength and get the best bite on your floor, okay? Again, it loses strength if it completely protrudes out the bottom of your floor, okay? Um, I'm going to do just a little section here out in the field and then I want to tell you um, the direction in which I staple, okay? You're never going to have too many staples. You can definitely have not enough. So notice if the board is just sitting there all by itself, it definitely has movement on it. So I will show you how I like to nail it out so that I know that my board is actually flat down on the floor as I sink my staples, okay? So we don't want the floor bouncing up and down as we are nailing it, okay? We want our board to be nice and firmly planted on the floor as we nail it. That way, if we shoot a staple in it, like that right there, and it's not securely on the floor, what will happen a lot of times is if, if you step on that, then it'll go creak, and it'll actually 
push down and then become firm. Then once it creaks through the staple, it actually will get pushed down on the floor and because of that, it's not securely fastened to the floor, okay? So what happens is, I'm gonna to try to demonstrate this right here. So this is my board right here and this is the staple. If it goes down like that right there and then it creaks, I, the board goes down on the floor and then I got that much room of my staple legs that's not gonna be pushing that down on the floor and securely fastening it to the floor, okay? I hope I made sense out of that. But anyway, the main point is you want your board firmly planted on the floor as you're nailing, okay? And also, if you can see the grain in the board is running this way right here, you want to put your crown, the crown of your staples, you want running crossways like this right here, okay? So this is your staple. You want it to go across the grain instead of with the grain like that. It's going to get a much better hold running across the grain than it is running with the grain like that right there, okay? So always, if possible, shoot your staples in a position where they can go across the grain, okay? It's going to get a much better bite. Okay, now back to having my subfloor firmly planted on the floor when I nail it, okay? I'm gonna have my hand here as I take off. Notice my hand is staying in front of me as I go along and staple the board down, okay? Again, there was just a few void spots where I decided to go back and put a few extra staples, okay? Now, with that done, I'm going to take and I'm going to stay backing up here. My body weight right here is on the board right here. This is all pushed down from that row of staples. Now, my body weight sitting on the board that I'm nailing is actually going to hold it down on the floor. Hear that? Huge difference. You can tell that this is just like floating on the floor and this is already down solid on the floor. That's exactly what you want whenever you're nailing. So when I nail, I will start on my seam, on the seam of the board and then back myself up all the way down. And I never, never will run way down here like that and then come back up and fill this out, okay? If your board has a little bit of a raised up here or raised up here and you put your row of staples back here and then come up here and try to staple it down, you're gonna have a little void, a little pocket and it's gonna be creaking and popping on you, okay? Always start at one end and work your way back to the other end, okay? Don't, don't secure this to the floor and then come down here on the other end and put you a couple of staples down here and shoot you a couple staples down here to make sure that your seams are lined up or anything like that. You're going to trap your board up in the air like so and then you're going to be shooting staples down in it like that which is definitely going to cause problems. You got to have your board flat on the floor whenever you shoot staples in it, okay? Now right here on the edge I'm going to treat the edges just like a seam, okay? I want to go about every two inches with the edge nailing just like I do on the seam, okay? Over here on this edge where I just did my random field pattern, I'm going to come back and go every two inches on my far edge, okay? It's not, it's not a, a big deal. It ain't have to be like every two inches. It cannot exceed two inches. If you get an inch, three quarters, inch and a half or whatever, that's all cool. Just do not exceed two inches. You don't want three or four inches of space between your staples on an edge or a seam, okay? And again, you want to you want to be in about a half inch from the edge of your board, okay? Okay, so we've got a staple that hit a nail or a screw in the subfloor. As you can see right here is the seam in the in the subfloor. I got screws screwing the subfloor down. So what happened when I was nailing running my staples right here, a staple actually hit one of them screws, which definitely happens occasionally on the job. So you, again, you wanna cause as little damage to this underlayment as possible, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take me just a scrap piece of my underlayment right here, and I'm gonna use it to pry on, okay? I do not want to take my channel locks 
and just dent the wood. I don't want to take my hammer and beat that down. That's going to leave a dent in the wood also. All of that stuff will definitely telegraph through. If I glue some shiny vinyl down on this and there's light coming in casting across this underlayment and vinyl after it's installed, you're definitely going to see a little divot. You're going to see a, a dent in the vinyl, which is actually going to be in the underlayment itself, okay? So cause as little damage to this underlayment as possible. I'm going to put my board right here, just a little scrap piece, and that's going to give me something to pry on right there. There we go. Now I've got very, very, I'm going to just take, tap that down. Now it's perfectly smooth. I don't have any dent or anything right there to that. And um, I'm going to show you exactly what happens whenever you mar this floor up from banging a nail in it, shooting a screw in it, or anything. I'm going to show you why you don't want to do that, okay? Stapling this down is definitely the way to go. I'm going to drive a couple nails in it, and I'm going to shoot a couple screws in it and let you see what happens, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do is just take a few nails and drive it in, and this is just going to demonstrate... Uh, what happens to your floor whenever you nail it down. I'm going to do the same thing with some screws. I'm going to sink a few screws in it and show you what happens when you screw your floor down. It might look all nice and pretty and you might feel like, yeah, that's going to hold. I'll even put them uh, four inches in the proper pattern that they should be in, okay? So, uh, you might have seen me get an extra little hit on this one right here. The reason for that is, watch this. So if you can take a putty knife, a trowel, or something like that, and rake over it and hit it like that, you need to give it another hit, okay? So I sunk that in there. Now you're not hearing it, okay? I'm going to do a few more of these just to show you real nicely. Okay, now I want to do me a few screws just for an example of getting it screwed down. And again, I'm just sinking these screws just below the surface. You just don't want, hear that? That one actually needs to be screwed down just a little bit more. You got to have it lower than the surface. Just another little, okay, that's good. Okay, there we go. So now I've got four screws and four nails, and um, I want to show you what it looks like, okay? So I'm going to show you over some staples, and then I'm going to come over and show you what it looks like over the nails, okay? So what I did, I mixed up some floor patch, and this is going to be a perfect example. It's going to show you real nicely the divots in the floor, okay? Okay, so what I've done, I've, I've dropped out some floor patch here on the floor. What that's going to do, it's going to show any imperfections in the floor. You see how that comes off really nice and clean right there. You don't show any divots or anything. This is perfectly smooth, so it literally just changed the color of the board, okay? It didn't leave any thick spots or anything. Any little dent or imperfection is going to show with the floor patch, okay? I want to come over here and show you what it looks like on the staples now, okay? So I've got me a glob right here on the staples. Now watch this. So that's what it looks like right there. See that little, just a little bitty dent right there where the staple is, okay? That spot right there, that is going to be so insignificant that that's not going to show up when you glue anything down. On the other hand, let's go check out the staple, the nails and screws. Okay, so a while ago when I was demonstrating pulling that board out, pulling the staple out, how I did not want to ding the floor or be, uh, put a dent in it or anything, this is why, okay? Again, I've just sunk these below the surface so that my trowel is not going to hit them, okay? That's what you have to do. But look at the dent that I put in the floor, okay? 
Look how big of a spot that is on the floor. You can definitely see that. See how big those are? So when I wipe all the excess off, you have those big dents left with floor patch in it, okay? Now, if I nailed the whole board, I would have to go over the entire board with floor patch to get all this stuff smoothed back out because if you don't, you're going to see those dents. You can see exactly how big they are right there. Those are some nice dents in the floor, okay? So if I did not fill those, you're going to see that telegraph through uh, whenever you glue a shiny surface on it. Like I was talking about a while ago with the light coming across the floor, it's going to be sucked down in all those dents whenever you glue it down. All that stuff is going to show your floor is going to look rough as a corn cob, okay? Let's check out the screws and see what it looks like. I think you get the picture now of what I'm talking about, but for the sake of showing you, I just want to show you the same thing with these screws, okay? So once again, you can see how big of a spot that those leave, okay? Now that's simply extra there, but all those spots right there are definitely big enough to where they're going to show if you glue a flooring over it, okay? You definitely cannot deal with that. Okay, so I hope this video helped you guys out. I hope it gives you enough confidence to take on projects like this yourself at your own home. Again, if you, for all these nice professional tools, you can go to toolsforflooring.com. Again, America's number one online store for tools and supplies when it comes to flooring, okay? I will leave links in the description to the tools I used here and also links to toolsforflooring.com. Go check them out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, FBSB's out.